Hello internet friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lindsay, aka Lijo, and we have a video today. All right, so I've gotten a few questions from several of you recently stating that you would like me to make a video on INTJ careers. And at first I was like, oh, I'm not gonna make that video. Everyone figures it out, especially the INTJs. They kind of will end up landing where they need to. But do you know what? If your rate of landing could be faster because of this video, heck, I'm gonna make it. So I'm actually in the field now that I wanted to be in when I was much younger. I saw someone working with my dad who had the job that I have now. And I was like, wow, that guy has a really cool job. I wanna do that. So I would say number one is not having a job that makes you expend energy in a certain way at a certain rate. Number two, I would say, is having a job that allows you to have your own space um, and preferably quiet at times if possible. Either that, work at home. Um, I know a lot of people who work remotely and lets you control your area so that you can be productive in the best way that you see possible. That's the other thing with like, more traditional working environments is a lot of people think they know the best way for you to be productive and the best way for you to manage your energy and your time. As an INTJ, we are very protective of those things because we're very particular in how we execute to get from A to B and we know what's going to work best. And so being forced to do otherwise and kind of conform to someone's pattern that would, will be wrong for us, uh, it's not a pleasurable experience. So as much independence as you can just be in, the better. We wanna do the thing, we just wanna do it our way. <laughs> Number three, I would stay away from jobs that put you in a lot of SI work, which means anything with making uh, like reports, lists, analytical things, things where you're dealing with line by line sensory. Oh my gosh, not a fan, not gonna do it. I, I literally had a job one time and I don't know how I didn't get fired over this, but um, I was given like all these handwritten names to enter into um, a database basically. And this is not something I'd ever done before there. The person who usually did it had like left the company. And so they're just like, here's this huge stack of paper that you have to hand enter into this database. Some of the names were in different languages. And so I took the stack of papers. I walked up to my boss and I said, you pay me too much and my time is too valuable to do this. And he looked at it and he was like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I did not have to do that task, but those line by line sensory details that are critical for your job performance, I would definitely stay away from professions that require that consistently. And maybe there's a period of time where we have to do it, but there's freedom on the other end. I wouldn't lock yourself into a job that required that all the time. And next, I would look for a field that centers around innovation in some way. Um, as INTJs, we are really good with, you know, either coming up with the idea or working with someone else who maybe has the idea, but seeing the process and flow to get there and then delivering on the execution. And sometimes that process is really unconventional and will freak some people out. And they're like, we can't do it this way. But we're like, yeah, we definitely can. Let's just try it. This should work. And also, you have to earn trust from people. People are not gonna just trust you automatically if you're new to a job and you wanna do some crazy thing. So keep that in mind. But in general, companies that value that independent search of innovation will be valuable to you and your career. All right, and my last suggestion is be your own boss and work for yourself. I think a lot of INTJs, maybe not in the beginning, um, I think sometimes it takes us a little while to really get comfortable in the sensory as humans and like, going through it and doing the thing. But you're gonna get to a point where you realize that, man, I am earning someone else a lot of money. And do you know what, that's great. And you know, maybe you love that job and it's, you know, it relates down to your FI, right? It relates down to your values, you're passionate about it. Cool, awesome, hang with it, right? But 
I think a lot of us get to the point where we're like, man, I could be making a lot more money for myself um, by just doing what I do well, but for something that supports my long-term personal goal or my long-term vision for the life I want to live or contributes to something that I value more than where I'm currently at. So I can't say you're going to be an entrepreneur or you're going to be entrepreneurial, but I'm saying it could be a possibility. I really just think about where you see yourself headed what kind of life you want to be living in the future and what that really looks like. What does your realm of independence look like? What does your realm of living look like? And try to visualize those things for yourself and then see what the best way to get there is. Anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I didn't name any professions specifically or any careers in adequate detail, in adequate sensory detail, but I hope you were able to see the concepts that I think apply best to INTJs and their career paths and what may work best and what may not work as well. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not already. Work on the thing that you think is going to be the best thing. And I will see you in my next video. I'll meet you on the comments below. Meet you on the comments below. Meet you down at the comments below. Okay, bye. <laughs>